Today's Football Manager experiment is a big one. It's taken a few weeks to get working. Um, it turns out Football Manager doesn't like it if you give one football club over a thousand players. Today, PSG are ruining football. They've signed 1,500 of the best players in terms of current ability and potential. Today, we're going to see how they get on, what the knock-on effect is for all the other leagues around the world, and how PSG manage uh, a squad of 1,500 players. I feel sorry for the coaches. This is going to be a weird one. <laughs> Let's get into this. Today's video is brought to you by the Gigabyte G7 gaming laptop, powered by Intel. More info later in the video. So yes, gang, we are back. I hope you're doing well. As I've already mentioned, this took a lot of time to get working. So if you enjoy the video, do smash a like on it. It feeds the YouTube algorithm and pushes this video out there. Today, we have PSG. Everything looks normal-ish on this screen here. But if we go to the senior squad screen, um, this is where the weirdness begins. Here is a list of every single footballer at their club. Um, it, 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 I mean, you can see the scroll bar on the right-hand side. It's quite big. I'll drag it down. Um, there's 1,500 players contracted to PSG. They've all been rounded up from their former clubs and transferred to PSG. And today we're going to see how they get on and also what the consequences would be on world football if PSG just decided to ruin the sport and buy all of the best footballers. So in today's video, we're probably only going to get forward a couple of years. That is because halfway through the year, I want to come back and see how Pochettino's doing because he has got to try and pick a squad from all these players. Also, I believe he can only register 100 players for the uh, the league. I mean, this is a very weird scenario that would never normally happen. I have no idea what's going to happen here. Now, of course, it's not just PSG that are going to be affected by all of this. If we look at the Premier League and the season preview, Newcastle are the favourites to win the league. Um, meanwhile, Liverpool are down there at the very, very bottom because all their players have left the club. Um, now, one important thing just to note is players who are on loan in real life, like Saul, um, are no longer at Atleti. Um, but they are at Chelsea. Uh, in this example here, he's contracted to PSG and on loan at Chelsea. And in fact, all of the top players here in this list, even players like Twan Zebe, fall into the catchment area where PSG have signed them. Over in Spain, things are much better. Hector Bellerin is the best player in the league on loan at Real Betis. Now, of course, all the players on loan are going to return to PSG. And come January, even in the first transfer window, we might see PSG j j just kind of accomplish a mass exodus of players. They've got 1,500 players at their disposal. There is absolutely no way in hell they're going to keep them all happy. This morale here, I mean, it's already not great. This is, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's going to be a mess, surely. I can't keep a squad of 20 players happy. I feel sorry for Pochettino a little bit. Unfortunately, Football Manager crashes if I try and click on the PSG squad whilst I'm the PSG manager, I can only assume there's too many players to load. When I'm not in charge, I can see enough. In terms of their finances, well, the good news is they've got 200 million in the bank. Transfer budget, there's some more money if they really want to sign anyone. The wage budget in Football Manager naturally scales at the start of a save game. Their wage budget sits at 106 million pounds. I can only assume this is going to go down over time, otherwise their finances are going to be a mess. Um, yeah, I have a feeling if I did this with any other team, it would cause a load of issues. I'm hoping that because PSG have basically infinite money, they're going to be okay. I mean, I've not even considered if they're going to pass financial fair play now that I think about it. I, I don't know what's going to happen. If you're wondering about the Media Dream 11 over in League, uh, well, um, look... It's very much PSG players, because of course it's PSG players. Uh, Messi and Lewandowski considered the key players, and, well, you can see what the game basically thinks the best 11 is when you have all the best players at one club. They are 1-25 to on winning the league. That means that if Monaco in second, if you wanted to back them to win the league first year, if you put a pound on it, you're getting £100 back. Um, I think they're going to win the league. I... I yeah, I think they're going to win the league. That might be a bold prediction. We'll go see. But anyway, to kick things off, we're going to go forward to January. I want to see what the state of play is when it comes to PSG squad happiness, the transfer situation, how their players are 
playing, how the manager is acting. I mean, logically, they should win absolutely everything. Let's go and see if that's the case. I've returned, everyone. It is February 1st. I waited until after January was over. If you're wondering, have they sold anyone? I mean, the answer is yes, they have actually sold players, but they've all just been sold to Newcastle. Who, uh, if you're wondering, how are Newcastle doing, Jack? Uh, they're running away with the Premier League because they're the only team that seems to be able to buy players from PSG. Um, well, obviously, keep an eye on that as things go. As for the PSG transfer stuff, well, I forgot to mention this. It includes all the players being moved to the club for £12.3 billion. Um, this, this is, a, a, I don't know why I'm doing this. This is a very long list. It's going to take a while to get to the bottom. Um, how are they doing in the league, you might wonder? Well, <laughs> um, they're behind Leon. Behind Leon, I don't know what's happened here. If we just look at Leon's squad, just to give you an idea of the state of play, their team is not very good. I mean, yeah, their team's not very good. They've got some okay players, don't get me wrong, but it's it, it's not as good as the PSG team. Now, you might be sat there wondering, well, Jack, what's happening with the PSG team? They've only got a goal difference of plus 14. They've only won 12 out of 21 I'll be honest, I don't really know how to describe what's happened, but if we just go and look at the, say, the Marseille game here, here is the PSG squad. The game doesn't know how to handle it, basically. Uh, they're playing uh, Villar in goal. I've clicked on his name. I'm hoping his profile's going to load. I don't know if this is going to load. We'll wait. We'll wait. I don't know how long I'm going to be here for. So here we have Gonzalo Villar. Um, important to note, he's a central midfielder. Um, yeah, look, I don't understand either why they've played him in goal for two games. I, I kept, look, when I did this video, I didn't know that AI was going to bug out like this. Skriniar is playing out on the left wing. Like, yeah, um, it's weird. So yeah, you can see here, Skriniar's played two games all year both to, as an a left attack in mid, where he's actually got a 7.45 rating, so maybe he's quite good at it. Now, I don't know if there's some weird rules in Liga that I'm just totally forgetting that exist, but basically, it seems like a little bit of a shambles here. If we just hide all the players who are out on loan, so we've only got players here at the club, you can see Hakimi and Ruben Diaz are playing consistently. They've got 20 and 19 games. And then it just seems like the AI is trying to balance the happiness of all the other players in the squad. Um, somewhat unsuccessfully. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously there's a load of players here who just aren't playing, who are all wanted by different teams, many whom are transfer listed, because, well, obviously PSG don't want all of these players. They realise the error of their ways. They've realised that by buying football, they've actually ruined the sport, and now they're trying to get rid of everyone. It is just a big, giant mess. I'm assuming they are going to win the league by the end of the year. I mean, Lewandowski's got four goals in six. Messi's got four goals in five. So over the course of the January transfer window, they got rid of 80 players in total. Um, interesting to note, in the Champions League, they're doing fine. They play normal teams in the Champions League. This is why I'm a little bit confused and wondering if I'm just forgetting something. Also, Chelsea fell, finished behind Red Star in the group. That, of course, being because Chelsea don't have any of their players. If you want to see how all the groups have gone, well, obviously, there's been quite a lot of collateral here in terms of the knock-on effects. Uh, Man City and Borussia Dortmund have failed to get out of a group alongside Zenit and Olympiacos. Elsewhere, Real Madrid finished bottom of their group. Liverpool are not doing very well. Um, if we look at the Premier League table, the bottom three is Arsenal, Leeds, Man City and Liverpool. Or bottom four. I, counting's hard. Look, my head's gone. I might be managing PSG. Maybe that's why they've played all the players out of position. And if you're wondering about the other leagues, well, over in Spain, Elche are currently top of the league by two points. And what is a very competitive league? It has to be said. Over in Syria, um, Juve is still quite good. Although Sampdoria are doing very, very well for themselves. In the Bundesliga, Bayern Munich, rubbish. It turns that out. They're down in seventh. Hoffenheim leading the way. I mean, look, if we want to make the rest of football more interesting, let's just let's just get rid of all the players and send them all to PSG. Look, League uh, can continue to be a bit of a farmer's league with PSG just winning it all but one year. And uh, we can just enjoy football as purists everywhere else where money doesn't ruin it. 
except in the Premier League where Newcastle are in first. Also, shout out to, to Tottenham. I think this is the best I've seen Tottenham do in any football manager save game this year. They're always rubbish. Here, they're in fifth. I've just tried to add a manager uh, at PSG just so we can take a look at the finances. The game is very slow at loading stuff. Like, it, it is struggling. Uh, I mean, this is what the, the assistant thinks the best 11 should be. I wish the actual manager would listen to him with that. Uh, right. I've just realised one of the one of the kind of expectations here is to sign high reputation players. Is Pochettino or whoever is going to end up managing them going to be able to achieve that when all the high reputation players already play for them? Uh, we'll find out on that front. On the financial front, ah, uh, you see, this is what I feared might happen. Um, they're currently failing financial fair play. Their wage budget has gone down. Their total wage spend has also gone down through selling players and loaning them out. Uh, financially, I mean, they got to negative 600 million and then they went back into the positive and then they've got into debt again and then gone back into the positive. Are they taking loans to solve this? No, is it sponsorship deals that are being generated? Ah, yes, it is. Um, if you don't know, Football Manager, especially if you have a tycoon owner, just cheats the finances to stop teams going broke. This is why I chose PSG. Not because, like all other Football Manager players, I absolutely detest them. But as you can see here, they've taken a $1 billion, uh, or £1 billion, I should say, sponsorship deal. A £999 million sponsorship deal. And then there's another one that magically appeared for £165 million. I assume that was at the start of the season and then they realised how much more money they were going to need. That £165 million was not going to go very far in the grand scheme of things. I mean, the expenses month on month are quite expensive. They're paying £382 million a month on wages. Um, so far this year, they've lost almost £2 billion due to those. Of course, that will normalise over the coming years. I'm curious to see if they can actually get through financial fair play through just cheating the system like clubs do in real life because it exists in Football Manager. I have a feeling they're going to pull it off. Yeah, uh, I don't really know what to make of what we're seeing here. They're bottling the league because the game doesn't know how to play their team. All the rest of the leagues are suffering. I think all we can really do is go to the end of the year and see if they are able to well, win the league. If they don't win the league, anyone who put money on Leon at the very start is going to be very, very rich. Uh, let's go and see if any millionaires in France have been made, shall we? As mentioned, today's video is sponsored by Intel Aneurys and the Gigabyte G7 gaming laptop. It's powered by an Intel 11th gen processor, giving you the power and battery life to create and play on the go. Its 240Hz screen makes it perfect for gaming, and with expandable storage, an SD card reader, and Bluetooth, it's the ultimate creativity machine. The machine is lightweight, has a huge display, and fits perfectly in my backpack, making it easy to carry around with me without too much hassle. It can load up a ton of leagues in Football Manager, play the game in 3D flawlessly, and it's perfect for playing Football Manager just about anywhere. You can check out the laptop itself, there's a link in the description. Okay, so we are at the end of the first season. I left the game simulating. I want to show you something. Under game status, to simulate one season has taken 30 hours. I don't know why, every time PSG get to a match day, the entire game kind of freezes for like an extended period and then eventually it keeps going. The good news is we've got to the end of the year. I'm hoping as they get rid of players, the game is going to get a little bit quicker in terms of simulating seasons. Otherwise, I am going to be sat around for a very long time. If you're wondering what happened in League A, uh, well, PSG won the league. Um, it seems like after Christmas, they figured out that they should actually play a normal team. I'm judging that on the fact that Lewandowski's got a 7.8. Um, in terms of the top goal scorers, I assume Lewandowski was probably their top goal scorer here too. Oh God, this is even laggy to scroll through. Okay, there's no PSG players here. Maybe they did rotate things then. I mean, logically, I should just load up the squad screen. I'm just scared whenever I click on this screen that it's all going to lag horribly. But I think we're okay. Okay, Ronaldo has decided to retire at the end of the year. I guess he's had enough of just not being played for PSG. Top goal scorer was Lewandowski, then Mbappe, then Messi, who is uh, transfer listed due to the club's perilous financial situation. How many players are transfer listed, I wonder? Okay, they've got injuries and they've got players leaving the club already. There's lots of players wanted. Who's, I mean, are all of these transfer listed? 
Oh my god, how sorry, how how many players are wanted? I'm looking at all of these players. The majority of them haven't played very many games and are just transfer listed. Uh, I think there's over a thousand players transfer listed. Oh my god, it keeps going forever. Um, we're nearly at the bottom. There's also a lot of players retiring. I imagine a few players are retiring quite young because, well, they've just not played any football this year. We've got players in their early 30s retiring also. I think I clicked on Diego Costa and the game has crashed. I'll be back in a second, folks. So in terms of PSG's achievements elsewhere, good news. They won the French Cup. And as I mentioned, for some reason after January, they seem to have figured out how to play a squad again. So I'm very happy for them about that. I'm wondering if that is to do with some of the players they were able to sell. And also if the reason that the game was taking so long on match days to simulate forward is because it's trying to work out what the best 11 is. The AI is trying to process, obviously, making all these decisions because there's like a thousand players to pick from. It takes way longer. They did win the Champions League. They beat Sporting in the final, um, despite Kimmich getting sent off. They got a 2-0 win. Sporting did absolutely nothing in the game. Um, so it turns out if PSG want to win the Champions League, they all, all they need to do is sign every other team's players. So looking at a tree view here of how all the knockout stage games went, because I know people will be curious to see who made it far. Uh, Dynamo lost to Sporting in the semi-final. Porto lost out to PSG in the other semi-final, although it was a pretty close game. It finished 4-3. Elsewhere, uh, Bayern beat Dynamo Kiev. Midtjylland made it to the knockouts. Olympiacos got knocked out to Dynamo. Uh, Red Star and Lille also made it quite far in the competition. And of course, PSG won it. So congratulations, PSG, I guess. If you were wondering, how many players were transfer listed, Jack? 754 PSG players transfer listed. I'm a little bit scared that Newcastle are just going to sign them all. And well, speaking of Newcastle, well done. You win the Premier League. We're all really, really proud of you. Danny Ings um, signed for 26 million in January, got 10 goals in 14. So well, well done to him. Elsewhere, Rudiger got a very good rating in the league. Again, another January edition for Newcastle, if we look at their transfer history. Um, I think there might be investigations done into the number of deals they did with PSG this year because there was quite a lot of money exchanged. And, well, it won them a title. Elsewhere, Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal, all relegated. Manchester United finishing 17th as well. Yeah, it turns out that when you get all the big teams in the Premier League and just take away all their best players, that they struggle. To this extent, I perhaps didn't expect them to struggle. I thought they would spend more money. But as it turns out, none of them really spent any money. So they just kind of went down with the teams that they were gifted. As for La Liga, congratulations, Elche. You've won the league first season. Um, very, very proud of you. Atleti and Sevilla and Villarreal, all relegated. Not great for them. Over in Syria, Napoli and Atalanta relegated, but Juve still managed to win the league convincingly. Of course, they've got players like Chiesa and Maratta in on loan. They're all going to be returning to PSG. So quite if they can maintain this next year, remains to be seen, I guess. And last but not least, over in the Bundesliga, Hoffenheim, 66 points, top of the pile. I mean, well done, lads. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach relegated. Kind of surprised that the likes of Bayern, Borussia Dortmund and Leipzig did as well as they have. Um, obviously, with the way that I selected the players for PSG to sign, I took a combination of players with the best current ability, but also some of the best players with good potential to hopefully give them the best chance of long-term success over at PSG because they obviously they need that. Um, what that does mean is that in some cases, like Manchester United, uh, a lot of their best young prospects have been caught up in that kind of catchment of players so I've ended up at PSG. Meanwhile, at a team like Bayern Munich, they're still able to string together a reasonably strong team made up of, you know, largely backup players who don't fall into that category of kind of being one of the best 1,500 players in the world of football. Anyway, this is part one. We will be back with a part two very, very soon. I'm looking down at my recording software. It says I've been recording for 45 minutes. The game's been frozen for a fair amount of that time and I've had to restart a few times. Because, as I already mentioned, the game doesn't like what I've done here. What that does mean is, I have no idea how long today's video is. But I hope you've enjoyed it regardless. If you have, as I said at the top of things, do smash a like on it. This has been a pain in the butt 
to record, to simulate. It's crashed a lot. The game doesn't like me. My computer's crying. My electricity bill's going through the roof. Um, one like helps me pay my electricity bill so I can keep doing stupid videos like this one that no one else really wants to do because why would you? As always, if there is an experiment idea that you have that you would like to see me do, let me know it down in the comments. We will have part two coming in the next few days. I hope you guys are excited. Thank you once again to the sponsor of the video, Intel. And until next time, it is me, Jack. I'll talk to you all in a bit. I'm out.